As Henry Ford said, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. And in those moments, if rather than panic, if rather than letting your mind run away from you, rather than getting bitter or angry or frustrated, if you remember in those times that forcing yourself to push through it, forcing yourself to find the opportunity, forcing yourself to find the lesson in that is going to be the very thing that gives you lift. It's actually constraints. It's having restrictions. It's having difficult times. Those are the things that allow people to really find and tap into the thing that's going to allow them to achieve what they want to achieve because it's going to push you. And I know that's never fun. That's not what anybody wants to hear. But the reality is, if you want to achieve something great in your life, you've got to be going into the hard places. You've got to be facing down the difficult things. You've got to be going down that road that is intrinsically difficult. It's untamed. It's wild and in that, in that sense that it's coming after you, in that sense that you've entered truly hostile territory, in that is the very thing that's going to lift you up and allow you to do what other people haven't done. There most certainly are times when we feel like that, when you say, I don't have any idea whatsoever those deadlines, and I lost a car, lost a home, uh, lights were cut off, telephone was cut off. All of those things are going to happen to you at different points in life. Now, the question is, what, what does it really mean? It really doesn't mean anything. It's not important at all. It's just a temporary inconvenience because all of those things can be corrected. And it's a part of the process that we all go through. Now, the challenge is, in the midst of all of these things, I to you that there will be some intervention. What causes it? I don't know that will seem like it's supernatural. Give you, an, I, give you an example. I remember once when I lost my job, when I was fired out of broadcasting, September 18th, I'll never forget, 1978. I was be, behind in my house nurse, and my house was up for foreclosure. I did everything I could. I had borrowed as much money as I could borrow. I had talked to family members and friends. I did everything I could, and I couldn't get enough money. Being unemployed for several months, I wanted that money. Each thing that is wrong with you has to be a focal point. You can't look at this gigantic place and say, I gotta change all this shit. My God, this is crazy. No. You take off the first one. I want to be smart. For me, that was my thing. I have to, I have to become more intelligent. I have such a severe learning disability and I can't retain shit. I had to now get that one thing and then strategize in that one problem. How can I do this? I'm not gonna learn like you. I'm not gonna learn like anybody else. How am I gonna figure this out? So I then figured out, okay, where are my strengths here? Where are my weaknesses in learning? All right, man, how am I gonna do this? And I figured out a way to do it by this strategy.
give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. You're not tired, Eric. Your brain is telling you some dumb stuff. If you were tired, you wouldn't have been able to walk for it. Okay, so let's do this. Just run for two minutes. Somebody right now go to a whole other level. The Bible says the, the reason why you go back to sleep is because you've always gone back to sleep. It's like a default. You, you go back to sleep because you always, all you got to do is stop going to sleep and then you're going to stop going to sleep. All you got to do is stop fussing and cussing and then you're going to stop fussing and cussing. All you got to do is stop spending all the money you got and start saving it. Listen to me. I became number one in the world. I became a millionaire not because I made more money. I became a millionaire because they told me millionaires only live off of 30% of their income. I want to make it plain for you. I became a millionaire because I did what millionaires did. I stopped living off 100%. Rich people don't work. They think. Poor people work. Poor people go, clock in, I make this much. Rich people go, I put them to work, and I make this much. See, what happens is you're working for you and your family, one. They got 40 of you working at one time. So they're giving you 20%, and then they're keeping the 80% off of 15,000. That's enough to have 20 So what you have to decide is, are you going to keep being to 99%, or are you ready to be a part of the because it doesn't make a difference where you come from, high school dropout. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, GED. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, sleeping in the band building. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, a 17-year-old mom that got pregnant. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, south side of Chicago. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, pretty much raised in Detroit. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, took 12 years to get a four-year degree. It doesn't take a, make a difference. You know what makes a difference? What makes a difference is when you become a 99% or a 1%. When I start thinking like acting like, behaving like, what I'm going to do. Is that clear? 